okay ld architecture till let me just introduce some you introduce you something with release 7 okay then after i'll come down to release 8 okay in release 7 something some new concept was introduced okay in release 7 was still 3g hspa plus which we call as h plus as well right where we used to have ue we used to have the node b right we used to have rnc which is to be connected for packet services to sgsn and then to ggsn right this was till release 6 till release 6 we used to follow the same strategy sgsn is doing all the signaling processing for the, the packet services your authentication your billing your routing and ggsn is doing your or is extracting all the packets from the external internet external isps right so in, in release 7 to in, to reduce some delay we thought that to get the data to into the rnc buffer rather than getting the data from ggsn to, through sgsn why not to remove sgsn and keep it I'll keep a link between rnc and sgsn only for signaling and data should be fetched directly from ggsn to rnc right because to, to get the data ggsn is the response is the responsibility of ggsn to get the data from external internet right but sgsn is majorly used for the signaling purpose right so rather than routing the data from ggsn then to sgsn then to the rnc why not to remove this link and make a direct tunnel between ggsn and rnc so that it can reduce some latency it can make the service more faster right so the same thing was introduced in release 7 right in release 7 this direct tunneling method was followed and this service sgsn link was just responsible for signaling and the data was fetched directly from ggsn to rnc and this tunnel this direct process is known as the direct tunneling Right, between RNC and DGSN. This was something introduced in release 7 to make latencies to, to cut down the latency and to make the speed of data high. Right, but in release 8, the architecture was completely changed. Now it was thought that rather than these two nodes why not to give these two responsibilities of node bin rnc to a single unit right so that the, the node can be much reduced the complexity of the network can be much reduced right so these two node bin rnc combines together to make something we call in release 8 lt network as e node b something where you find e is evolved right so evolved node b that is the combination of the rnc and node b of 3g so he is handling all the functions of rnc and node b itself in case of lte right so now we have introduced we have reduced this node right we have did this note here as well right so we are trying to make the data usage much more faster so latency has been reduced as number of nodes has been reduced complexity has been reduced 
as number of nodes has been reduced, interfaces has been reduced, and the speed will automatically go up high. Right. So, as we discussed earlier also, after learning 2G, learning 3G is a little bit like you can say a challenge. But once you learn 3G, learning LTE is not very difficult. Right, because it's, we'll see, it's almost the same thing. Okay. So, UE is user equipment, which we named as EUE, Evolved UE for LTE. Right. The basic terminology is basic fundamental is quite same as UE. With some interface here. Right. Okay, so EUE and E node B, they're having direct connectivity here, right? We used to call this RF part of node B and RNC as UTRAN. Right? Universal Terrestrial Radio Access Network. Right, we used to call the RF part as UTRAN. Now we start calling it as EUTRAN Right, because we here on in LTE the only RF part, the, uh, the element which is having the RF components is the E not be only, right, it's in the basis in the tower that is the only thing carrying all the RF functionalities. So a single node. So we start calling it as now EUTRAN. This is something we have RF part. And here the, in, the interface of UE and node B we used to call as UU interface. Remember? Of 3G we call it as UU interface. Now it's evolved, so we start calling it as EUU interface, right? So you see, learning 3G and LED is like most of the things you can still still compare. So it makes it makes us easy for us to learn the things, right? So EUU is an interface between EUE, the mobile, and the Node B. Okay. And then after, okay, before I go to core, now we don't have RNC here, and we know in 3G, RNC, we have introduced a new interface known as IUR interface. IUR interface was the interface between two RNCs so that they can communicate with each other, they can transfer the data between each other, they can have they can contact each other in case of soft handover thing. Right? But now here we don't have any RNC. So logically there is an interface between a node B, a E node B and another E node B. Right? Okay. So this type of activity has to be performed this handover type of thing now has to be performed between two E node B's. And the interface we have here, we call it as X2 interface. Okay. Right? Because they have to communicate with each other, so we have X2 interface now. Core network. Okay. So 
So the core network here, okay, in short, we name it as E2 EU TRAN, right? We name this part as EU TRAN here. This is the core part. We call it core part as EPC, Evolved Packet Core. Right. Okay, let me just draw it straight. Okay, we call it as EPC, your packet core. Okay, so now here we have four elements. We have something called MME, Mobility Management Entity. We will be discussing the, the, all, all these functions later, right? We have MME, we have something called HSS, Home Subscriber Server. We have something called S Gateway. We have something called P gateway, right? That is something we have core network, which we're calling as EPC Evolve Packet Core, the packet part. And there's something we're calling here as EUTRAN, E-U-T-R-A-N, right? And combining EUTRAN and EPC will give us the complete name of LT. We're calling it EPS. Evolved Packet System. Okay. Right. Plain you brief for the architecture now. Then we'll go in detail of every element. MME is something mobility management entity. All the signaling or control part is been handled by the mobility management entity for the e-node piece also for the serving gateway uh, yes Kasif, you're right PCIF is also the part that I have to 